in Anime Insanity Invitational. One of the best seasons in part of the Anime Insanity. It is a part of the contestants that joins the game and definitely brings up with new contestants and the favorite contestants. But these episodes are definitely rare in between one of those from season 1 and 2. But season 3 was the best. But which one do I like the episode more? Let's find out and see which one do I rank. This is Top 15 Best Episodes of the Inanime Insanity Invitational, right here on Son of Beast. Before I get to the list, let me talk about the, the quick disclaimer. This means that each episode turn out to be one that's made by the creators that done for this, in between of 1 through 19. That doesn't mean that each episodes are turning out to be very bad, or even crucial, or any disrespected behaviors right in between the compliments. This episode gives us here with the full background information from the creator and also with one of each animators that have done in between the contestants. So please try to respect the honors and also give community guidelines to the people who trust. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Number 19, Episode 8, Out of Body Experience. This definitely was a confusion, but in that case, when I was watching this one, I noticed that all bodies has been turning to be the other way. After this happened to be the killing uh, in between all contestants from the next contest, it definitely got slammed. So I was really noticing of how that happened when all competitors died, except for Bot and Nickel. Well, it's not really the thing that I was really trusting on, but I was really noticing of what's going on. Since Brian did give us a full detail of what's going on in the past, he definitely understands what's going on right in between of his episode. So that's why he was thinking of creating it. In between two parts, I had no idea what was going on, and I didn't really think what happened in, in between of how are they going to play like that. Right in between of balloon to goo, or test tube to clover, or even, of course, bot right over to yin yang. Well, <laughs> it's kind of confusing, but it seemed like everything was okay, but I don't think I wouldn't deserve it anyway. Because of the fact, I was really noticing that they played like, wait, it's kind of a weird game. It seemed like that this is why it's called Out of Body Experience. And definitely, Silver Spoon, voiced by Candle, signaling out that they all can ex practice our empathy. And definitely, yes. But if somebody is talking to me, then I would know it's real time job. Or even definitely one of my friends talking over. Well, <laughs> can't be that one. It was okay for this episode, but in that point in mind, I know that Clover is eliminated, so I'm not going to talk about that one too many times, but you know, that's the thing, what I always get, so the power is in my hand, so I can understand that one and make the jury to decide. Number 18, Episode 5, Tragedy at 60 Feet. Incomparable between the egg thing and also with the hill at 60 feet down the slope. Look no further than the egg test. So it definitely has to be cracked at that point. Testing out with the egg skill challenge. But however, things got really weird. Right in between of those two of the thinkers, the painkers, and definitely the sinkers. One contestant definitely dropped the egg and it was Silver Spoon. Well, don't worry. It happens most of the time. Even when it's cracked, it goes cracked. Well, not confusion when I did the box test here, right by the stairwell, just testing the experience of how hard it is or soft. Sometimes it could be damaged up. But however, things got pretty bad. You know what happened? They were fighting all over in between the tea kettle, balloon, and nickel, all to put boxing under pressure. But what happened is, on the other side, Test Tube knew he, he would have had to fight back from Cabby. But Goo definitely got sprawled down and to sadness. But in that case, something did happen. She slipped, and the hammer let go of her. And what happened here? Well, I'll tell you what. This is what happened. The hammer definitely hit on the box, and not on Clover anyway. She was gasped out, and I never really saw how that one coming. 
but yes, this is definitely pretty sad for me, but I was not really concerning of why that happened with the box being rolled over by any others. So it's not a great choice of how that really got into an accident. When something goes bad, you tell them right away. But me phone had to know that he would have to call medical immediately. Yeah, I know this is not a big day for me, but let's say this. If somebody would have called 911, then it was exactly me. Fortunately, they brought somebody in here and it's Dr. Fizz. But do I understand that Ying Yang knows Dr. Fizz anyway? But in that point, nothing would happen. And they all pulled him out for a box. Yeah, I was pretty sad about that. But you know what? This wasn't a day like this. So if you're ever experiencing of how the box is made out of cardboard, don't try this at home. Seriously, you won't even do this when you're in between the building, the house, or definitely roll around the playground with it. And you can't just play on your own. So you won't have a chance to do that. So if you definitely watched it, consider yourself with a lucky credit. Number 17, Episode 9, Title TBD. Featuring for our Navy Saber Spark, the T title TBD has to be the ultimate knowing of the creation from its design to make a movie making. Even when I've done classes of doing of in between from the shots and definitely right in between of making a movie film and also definitely what goes with a storyboard writing in between. This is what I wanted to do with my class. But, however, this has to be a different change. You can see what happens with that in between from his animation of the scene. From in between of the Team Pinkers and Team Pinkers. This happened to be like a new Pinkers idea, and they definitely did. But I noticed that whenever Team Pinkers are making up of a new idea creation, this all has to be like it's a real creation. That has to be like that. It all has to say is, they worked really hard. But I never notice of what director has to go with in between of nickel and test tube. Well, in all that cases, what I just didn't really expect is how hard they did. And with their budget amount right in between. So you definitely have to go onto the board, get some money, and you know, make a title about it. A commercial or anything. That's no use. So I couldn't really decide on what happened if there was in between of the luck. And also new leg replacement for Bobot as a robot from Test Tubes and Idea from Van. So I never realized of wow that got into the way. So you know what? This is definitely like a shocking awe moment. So yeah, with the title TBD, I'm really shocked of how this happened because that first one was very short. But the second one was very long, two hours ahead. I mean, views are not the only type of it about this happen. Well, especially not really the same thing that goes with. I might be thinking of an object show. But in that moment, it had to be the right thing for all of each contestants who definitely knows how to make a movie. Well, I have to say is I'm really shocked, but I should give that one an under list of this rating. Well, it would have been making into the top 15, but however, it didn't really caught on. So that has to be the next one under the list that was going to be a close call to that. So I have nothing else to say about it instead. So if you have any plans of how you made the movie, feel free to comment down here below. And I'll be happy to appreciate you and making an object show. Thanks for webs for Fs. You can check out the video here right in the description. Number 16, Episode 2, The Shame of the Name. After a first episode smash kit for Stranded in Paradise, it's now time to move on to the next challenge. The name of it calls with the shame of the name. It comes to be picking your team name instantly. To go with in between by each three competitors with the team captain and also with the colors of in between of blue, pink, and yellow. Well, fortunately, however, I was really expecting that it would have been up of a cool name. Just like the one in BFDI, there was eight teams. However, Teardrop definitely lost that challenge. So now they're back to seven teams instead. With that being in mind, as I noticed before, it was in between of what the discussion is right in between of those teams. You know, from Fan and Cabby. I was realizing that 
it would have been a great idea to come up with that name. Well, <laughs> they had a lot of discussions to make that in between. But however, on the flip side, I saw that Candle and definitely with Yin Yang, Silver Spoon, OJ, Floor, and definitely other contestants from the team, they called it Fink. Think big, think strong. Well, that's definitely interesting, especially with Paintbrush, who definitely understands it. Well, I can definitely see that one coming. And for Team Blue on the other side, it looks like that Life Ring and Nickel wanted to come up with that name. So I was noticing of how this happened. But then after that, the walk, no time, but he finally knew he wants to see what their names are with the team. So the first one is Team Thinkers. Turned out to be a great exact idea what they did. Then it's Team Sinkers, calling for the boat sink off from Bodhi. If you recall that from here for the last episode in episode number one, Stranded in Paradise. But I'll see what I can do to place that one in the rank. But the next thing happened is, it was definitely a rip off. He didn't really like a name what he wanted to go with. But in that case, he definitely just saw that one coming. And Tea Kettle knew she would have to trash everything, but get lost. And then after that, Team Pinkers. It was definitely, yeah, it was kind of confusing, but they called it instead. So that's why the question mark has to be coming in there in between. So I couldn't remember what goes wrong if there is another choice. You know what my team would be? Team Blazers or Team Beast. You know what? Team Beast. That's what my gangs are. Me. Okay, I guess not. Maybe. Not. Never know. But in that case right now, I was realizing that Team Pinkers definitely think it just made that one worst. Well, no, it's not worst. It was, like, confusing. So in that case, I know that happened already, but... Yeah, it, nothing too excited or has anything showing, but, you know, it's what happens most of the time. So in that case, episode two, name of the name, goes with team of the name. But how shame it is when it comes up with a creation, idea, and definitely thinking of what is the best team name if you have come with your ideas. Like in the sports, competition, or definitely, of course, the game by itself. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely quite a pinning to me. So, I get that. It's all what happens. Shame of the name, shame of you. Now on to the list. Number 15. Episode 6. Try Not to Laugh Challenge. And definitely if a DNA in between of Try Not to Laugh Challenge by yourself and definitely with the competition, it's definitely what happens. When you try to react something, but you cannot laugh, this is definitely what the challenge is of trying to stay neutralized by showing a face. But however, I did seem to be impossible when something was going on with me. I definitely know that I had to laugh because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. And this is what happened. I, I failed! That's the third time! What was that noise? <laughs> no! I did it again! Yeah, that was definitely really bad, however. But I saw one of the contestants that made a laugh out of it. In the beginning, it was pretty crucial to me. But laughter is officially illegal. Why is that illegal? Well, here's the thing. I noticed that whenever you do with the laugh, you try not to do it anyway. Because at that point, you think sometimes it's not funny, or sometimes it is funny. Well, you must understand that one in between. But I was noticing what happened with Nickel. I definitely put it right in the pie. I guess that Nickel definitely was the evil one that was banned from the Pitnik's tables. Well, you won't never guess it if there's a next one coming in by, so you're not going to let me do the thing. But in that case, however, this is what happened. All of each competitors from the team definitely laughed, but some of them on the other side, on the outside, that are not competing, they would have to understand it too. They would have to judge on them. 
if they don't laugh or do laugh. But on the ending, it had to be Nickel put a laugh on Balloon and then try to avoid it from Bo and Floor. Well, it's not always what you think of trying to win the game. But this was no exception to make the use out of it. So what am I going to say? Nickel? Terrible? Nah, not really. So yeah, try not the laugh challenge was definitely the right choice for me, since I remember calling it from Chris Sonic Guy's reaction of trying not to laugh challenge before me, and now I did it anyway. Well, it's definitely what happens to make the extreme impossible of try not to laugh challenge. Well, in that case, if you don't know of Brittany, this is what happened when she laughs. And she said what's going on. She thinks that she could definitely just wet herself in her pants. Well, I'm not going to say anything, but that would be too embarrassing. So I'm not going to say that. Try not to laugh challenge. Give it a shot. And this episode, it was pretty good. Not bad at all. If you have a moment to rewatch it again, you can do that once so and for another. Number 14, episode 15, Blueburried. In the DNA of in between of Blueberry and Buried from Underground, Blueburried is the one that happened to be with the next one coming in. As I always noticed it before, before the rejoin happened, actually, no. This happened to be after the rejoin of episode number 10, before the next rejoin. So you thinking that it was going to be the end, it seemed like it did not happen. So they definitely really wanted to bring everybody back in for another chance. So as you may have already noticed, Blueberry had already died and they're trying to find a detective of how that happened or what the clue could look like. Put CA in between. If there was another choice of how they're gonna bring back Blueberry alive, they wouldn't have noticed if something was going on. While I was really noticing that it was going to be like death, I didn't think that it wouldn't be like no way Jose. So sometimes, however, it really had to be like not fun at all. In that case, it has to be a detective and a solving mystery of what could happen in between. But then everything has changed. Blueberry has started to rose from the dead. And now he's thinking that he did it by himself. You think I'm joking, do I? No, I don't think I am. Well, in that case, they blew up. He definitely did it again, and it's no way that you can definitely try to stop one if you knew it right away. So Blueberry, well, sorry, I don't think I wouldn't trust that in between. So it was really that kind of shocking moment, and they just let the gasp out from in between of the competitors who definitely did it again. On September 2023, when we returned to VidCon, I was watching it before reacting. Well, now I know it definitely did happen most of the time. So if Dr. Fizz would have realized that it would have been a unsuccessful attempt, he think that would be pretty awesome. But me, not really. It's not a great thing. Yeah, I know it's hard, but don't get yourself that used to it. Once again, if you think that episode 15 is better because of the detective and also noticing what the case of the murderer rules it, and find a history of the clue for Blueberry, you have it covered all right on your own. And who knows, it's yours. You can definitely watch it anytime if you like this one. Maybe that's the clue I can get right into it to make my own object show. Nevertheless, it would be hard enough to do for me. Number 13, Episode 1, Stranded in Paradise. In the beginning of Season 3, they all visited to the Paradise Island. Well, definitely, a one-faced immunity island. As it starts, they all make their way right down towards the Ever Island. This is what happens to make a start after the BFB-30, or should I call it BFDI-30 instead. This is where it all started. Entering in is the start time for the Stranded in the Paradise Land, where the favorite contestants are back from last season and two seasons ago. But now, they brought their new gangs in. It's meeting the fans right in between on the other side. So now I understand what's going on right in between. 
While the fan favorites, they were definitely realizing that they were definitely a favorite. But sometimes the fans, they're probably rookies. Who knows? It could be one of each in between. So it might have been a fan favorite or just a fan for a rookie that nobody would know. So this first challenge is to get this thing off to a cliff right to the tube and make your way to make the safe landing platform. As I noticed, the beginning of it was turned to be like this. It all has to happen right in between of Ying Yang, OJ, and Paintbrush starting underway first. Then on second thought, it happened to be Silver Spoon and Candle to make their way off the cliff and right into the tube. But then on the other side, it happened to be the Fingers. Not so well, however. It got pretty tight and went into the sand. And the last team was Cabby, bringing all competitors in towards the ride and definitely on its way out with Team Pink winning the game. As for Team Blue, it has to be the first loss of it. So I didn't really expect that I was going to say it was going to be the best one. But since like it definitely had turned out to be like too much or too not so exciting. Well, <laughs> I'm making it up. Or if it's not exciting enough, it seemed to be a little challenging for me to try to think of which episode is the best. So when I realized I was going to start reacting to this, I was thinking like, hmm, maybe I should get right into this one and step out of BFDI in between of TPOT. So I couldn't even think of a guess if this one was the start off winner or been stuck out last. So at that point, I would say is maybe they'll have to try to do it for the next one for season four. You'll never know. Maybe have to run you up this a little bit and then see if I can definitely react to that one. Well, level it up. If Strand Paradise means Paradise of the Island, Stranded means alone. And I know you would never be alone this island if I were you. You know, nobody compares to that. So that has to be explainable of what the Paradise is. It's very nice and comfortable too. Well, I can be on the land here too, right by the beach. The episode one starts things off. If you enjoy this episode, consider yourself as a noteworthy credit. Number 12, episode 16, The Great Bluish Bake Off. What happens if you cook and you make a perfect recipe? You come up with this creation of the idea. From the commercial of Kathy Mitchell's making creation of his own great recipes in between, this one turns to be like almost exactly the same thing that everybody loves. But this one, Blush Off, turns to be a blueberry rejoin in the game. After a one win, he realizes that he would be the king for now. But I wouldn't say if this would have been a roughness in between of what goes with the noteworthy credits in between. Then on a start race, as Blueberry made its all the way appearances to make its way down right towards the other side of a land, they have to use the other method. Instead of a van vehicle that was made right in between of a super van for the BFDI, the other method is to put in between of doing the other way. The helium has pushed up in between to make a turbine spin more possible in between to get right from the sand without getting stuck. So in that point, he used another idea. And with that air, it turned to be like more than you know. It would run out to make a push off right in between so they can definitely go faster and get to the finish before making the bake off in between. As I noticed here before, this definitely has to be like almost sinking things from the air. And you know, you would run out of gas, so. But in that note of mine, I saw that there is another change off right in between the cave, but I'll get to that later. I heard a voice, it almost sounded like Snowball, and something was pitched downward and almost dying out instantly. No, <laughs> don't ask me of what I did. So, as I mentioned it before, this is definitely what I have to know for. If there is another choice, it can be anybody, but it had to be the right deal. Instead of that one, there is the next one in the cave. Somebody had found it. Almost the same talk as Fiery. It was Tyler, the monster. Well, as you already noticed that it's pretty darkness when you can't call that one. 
I thought it's an eating monster, but it's not really that. This is what happens. It definitely just spotted on coming by. And then, as you already noticed, it would have been like a day never to be exact. He trusted them and definitely wanted to bring them up right to the platform so they can get cooking. But Blueberry on the other side, he was definitely doing really well, making the cookies out of it. And then once it turned out, after the contest was over, he thought that Blueberry would have won that game. But this happened all of a sudden. It crashed. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> this was pretty bad up with the land. But I wouldn't mind Clover, but don't mind me. This nice land must be Clover's spot. Who knows that for sure. And everybody had to escape the plan, so they have to get out of here with the hot air balloon. And yes, I wouldn't counter that one, literally. So I know this episode was pretty that good, but this was not enough. I was thrilled that this would be the best one in here, but that changed everything. Although I had to realize if I would have cooked really perfectly, this would have been the bake off in between of my own recipe of the idea without making this mistake by Blueberry. So it turned out to be like, good recipe, good call. And I know it would be like that. And me. But you know, it's not a great day for me. If I make that, it would be bad. But no worries, I really like this episode. So. It turned to be like good as new. So, for the BFDI TPOT to the Anime Sanity Bake Off show, it would be a presto to the work. And speaking of work, number 11, episode 7, Best Served Cold. The other one comes in between with ice cream flavors. As I noticed it before, every time you make one, it's definitely like a mile high pie. And yes, almost to compare as the mile high city of Denver, Colorado, with the top of the mountains right in between. But it would almost be exactly the same thing, just like the ice cream does it for all. Like, it's a one mile high. As you may already notice, that it had to be almost the same exact thing, just like the other one, as you may call for it, Bake Off. But this turned to be a little different. Instead of the Bake Off of the cooking part, right between desserts. The other one used to be with scoops, so they can scoop up each ice cream flavors right in between. As I already shown you the shorts, this happened to be Adam's creation of what he wanted to do. To make this recipe, he definitely demonstrates of how to make a mile high pie just like the show. But as of me, I would have to make something else different. Put every ice creams in between and put it in the freezer overnight and then stack on top to one of another. Bring the co cookie crumbles and stir and mix it in between and then definitely freeze it overnight. And then the next day, put in between the stats, or in between the top of the layers. And then, whenever you do, you get it done by stacking in between of vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. No matter which one it is, you can definitely mix it up anything. But as I mentioned it before, I saw that one contestant had made that splatter into a mess. You know, that hair definitely had to be turned to be the perfect one for a paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, I understand that one. But on the flip side, it happened to be like a two mile high pie. Whoa, isn't that crazy that you can beat over the mountain? Well, exaggerate that. This would be like a life sentences of making that one a huge stack off of the ice cream but I had no other choice what to say. After a contestant swap after the sinkers has been synced away, it's now new thinkers and new pinkers. Friendly idea, definitely would like to be everybody in between. Well, some of the competitors who really made the change didn't want to stay the same thing. So it had to be like one way or the other way. You never know, but that's what happens most of the team who wants to change things up swap tokens. I think I like that creation for the team Finkers. They have a great stack in between the chocolate and vanilla. But the team new Pinkers? Well, pfft, what the heck was that? Well, in that case, that is not a mile high. But that seemed to be disgusting in the bottom. Well, what in the world am I going to say now? Is this going to be me eating it and thinking that I would vomit out? 
Well, I'm definitely going to have a hard time of eating it, saying, with the disgusting part. But yeah, the new fingers definitely had a great exact thing, especially when I ate chocolate and vanilla. This would be like, you know what? I'm definitely like loving desserts in between, but I have to watch my diet for myself. This is definitely to be the work off on that in between with teamwork between of chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, mint, or any kind of ice cream flavors. But in that point, this is definitely what it is. And before you knew it, you like it too, more than ever. I think that Bake Off definitely had to be better than the Best Served Cold, but Best Served Cold definitely does it for me that this one beats over the Bake Off run. So that had to be a challenging success. Make that best yours of those serving ice cream flavors that you love. And your kids will love it too. Best served cold on summer days and every seasons. We are halfway to the mark and if you like what you see so far, feel free to subscribe and click the like button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out with new videos. You can also check out the playlist here right up on the calling card on your right. Number 10, episode three, Snapshot Showdown. Every picture you get, you face here on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, or any kinds of any social medias. But I always seen that there's a lot of snapshots they ever like. When they play in between of the pictures to snap it in between the best picks, or disguised pictures, or even some silly pictures, or any kind of it that you really want to make up. Some of them really turn to be like, it's the best picture that you can ever get. The silly one, like me phone dies one, or any of it in between, like it's a group picture, or yourself, or the selfie cam. It can be anybody that you like. But as I noticed there before, something I really reacted to, and something got really right out of the way. You know what happens? This is what they do. They looked at the camera facing forward. One contestant tried to take advantage of going forward and tried to scare him away. But it was all for Bo that was thinking that she was kind of scared. But now she's not afraid anymore and took the snap picture of it over the inflatable monster. Well, that's what they did. I thought they were going to get away for sure. Well, it's no idea, no folk, nothing. But as I just noticed it before, I was screeched out. When I saw that tea kettle saw this, beware, turned face toward a camera with that nostril out. Ew! Why in the world would I have to note that? Well, do you think this would be sacrificed if you ever just take a picture and go right forward to the camera? What if you think I would be doing that? Well, weird. But in that case, I see other competitors that took pictures and took a snap of it. One was Silver Spoon sliding up across the banana and the pine cones where Goo was landed at and Candle took that picture. Well, I know it was really hard for me to like, say is what's going on with the next challenge and what's going on of how they are taking pictures in between. Well, I'm not really an expert at this. I can really say is that they might be fighting going on or what could I say? They might be like, you know what? Let's take a snapshot and see who has the best picture of it. Maybe it would be me flexing muscles or even definitely that. Nickel would show like he would have been taking picture on Clover right away to make that spin and try to take the advantage of it to stop on. Well, I'm not really saying it would be very harsh. Well, you can honestly expect that it's snapshots been doing great and that's what happens most of them. So Tea Kettle got so cursed at me. I thinking that, yeah, pretty gross and definitely I would be like, you know what, I'm out. And that would be pretty cursed anyway. So yeah, best as described as tea kettle nostrils face is really cursed. So I was not really noticing of how well I was gonna say that tea kettle was gonna stay here before eliminated. But that's what happened. Episode three, okay. And episode six, she's gone. So yeah, Snapshot Showdown would be my choice if I take a friend of it right in between the gangsta or with my girls well it would be pretty amazing just for me and you sweet but in that moment 
Snapshot Showdown might have you to take on with your photos, and you can snap it to yourself and send it on the media, or send it to your friends for sure. It's definitely to keep an eye on it, but just be aware that sometimes it could be a little bit distracted, so make it real, okay? Number 9, Episode 13, Friend or Froze. From the game in between a freeze tag, or indefinitely put a foe in between you would know that this one comes up with a creation of in-between for the friend or fake. Well, you never know the thing of how that happened. Right in between of the real friends that are friendly and sometimes the fate means foe, it would be not like that you play along with them. And sometimes you think it would be not so cool at all. You may have remembered this from the iceberg here from season two. For those of you who have already watched it, well including fan favorite contestants. This contest starts off this. Both of each teams will have to take the use of the trampoline and will try to jump over right in between of the hill and right to the tube. You may have recognized it from episode number one. So that's why I put it up to level up right in between in the top 10. So episode 13 did that to be like, it was perfect. I think this challenge turned to be like, it was great. So that is a new challenging experience. I like that. But speaking of it, I noticed that Bobot now has revamped and now looked like a butterfly. How cute. I know that would be like, hey, Bot just been revamped into a bow tie to a butterfly. And you know that would be really cute. And thanks to one of them, who they really have dominated all into each other. Knowing the relationships right in between of Nickel and Balloon. So that happened to be like, you know what, let's fight. And that's what happens. They wanted to take the advantage and take the win. But some of them, I seen them take enough to advantage that they wanted to win. But they sometimes seemingly that they wanted to give up. It seemed like it would not to be this way. So that would be like no option forever. So I know that friend or froze can be a little challenging right in between. But sometimes for, for the favorite contestants, it seemed to be like, okay, I can take the advantage of it. If I were them, well, let's see how they would face against me. But as I go back into this one, friend or froze, not bad at all, but seemed like it's the same thing just like season two does. As you already may have noticed, friend or froze, what could you do? Both options, one choice. That's all that happens. Anyway, I got a good kick out of it. It turned out to be like great for its new episode releasement on April. Thus two years later comes up to be 12 years old. And now it had turned 13. I wish them a happy birthday to an anime insanity. Number eight, episode four, The Overthinkers. As I noticed before, after the contest, it now turns to be Finkers turn as they are up for elimination. They are now thinking that they wanted to choose their next eliminated contestant for the first start of the fingers. As I already noticed it, it's not really easy when you try to pick on who's the next one to be gone. But as you always make a concern of, who do you think is going to be eliminated? I haven't really shown of how the fingers were making the discussion right in between of the table who wants to go like in between of who wants to go with out of the captain or yeah, other competitors who are a fan of it. But as I can't tell now, this may have been like, it's very adeptical to find who would take a look at this. Like Ying Yang would even not be sure enough if they could try to like go with another choice. But sometimes with other competitors, there might be one chance that can go home and go back to where they came from. And now it's the signal of one of them, no questions asked. So as I noticed it before, Candle and Silver Spoon were taking on a journey, but they saw it was the top of the mountain, the crappy cliff. Sorry to say that, but that was pretty weird. In that moment, they were spotting of what's going on at the top, and they spotted here on the bottom. Lava flame right down beneath the surface, and it turned to be like it's a volcano, the biggest that you find from its sculpture. Deep, deeply, with anything, the red goop. 
Well, I don't know if that would be a thing. All for kind of the Earth's surface of the Paradise Land. Then this conversation kept on going, right in between to try to make a stop out of him. Who wants to go with the voting? And he had enough of it. He wants to try to stop one and try to think of who really wants to deserve it to go home. But he wouldn't think, he wouldn't care. And Paintbrush got really mad at it, trying to stop on OJ for sure. But Floor had enough. He didn't want that to be out of his mind. He wants to keep it silent and make it good as possible. So yes, I think that Overthinkers turned to be like this. And what happened here after with that discussion, going right in between the button, there has to be only one more thing left: the falling action in the volcano. That is really like, wow! I was not expecting this would be like an adventure taking underneath the volcano and in the flame of the center, and you see it closer. But she knew she had a power. She decided to put it on Silver Spoon. I can't believe it! I can't believe it that it finally worked. Well, that power won't help you if you're the real god, like in the sky of it. You know it would be Candle. But regardless, it has to be all of the powers that they would have to come up to face against, and they know they wanted to make the powers up too, come strong and face to face. So yes, episode four turned to be like it's a returning of the year in 2021. But now I realize that this would be like, well, okay, I can give a credit to that for the Overfingers. So that turned to be like they return from summer break. And back to the action for the work. So yes, I know that overthinkers turn to be like this, but if I'm overthinking too much, it would probably be me. So don't comply. Overthinkers, overthinking, and overlanding. That's what happens with the team thinkers. It's the effort to take the credits on. Number seven, episode seventeen. The show must go on. I was really shocked of how this would happen. First off, I noticed that this would be like it's a great way to show off what they did, but exactly of how that happened. So as I noticed here before, you think this would be a comedy sense if this would also known as save our show, but they don't want to do this here with the same thing, just like Jack and Jellyfy does from the BFB 29. But as I noticed here before, it almost sounds makes sense without the budget amount. It would have been the announcer's fault. But as I noticed here before, they wanted to come up with of another creation idea of the next contest. Well, thanks to Oscars, that may happen to be another choice with the situation. As Mephone definitely did give a call of what's going on, and they definitely made the meet up right in between the office to make the pictures and figure out which contest what they wanted to do. But sadly, they were trying to think of the discussion of which contest would they do now instead of later. Well, I would never do anything like that. But as I can definitely tell, this one's a hard one as I never even saw that coming. Well, because one of the dreamlikes that they wanted to keep the race going and find out which next contestant would be, it would be hard enough to find out which one's better and makes sense. Well, I'm not really capable of to going for the same thing or anyway. It all comes to be the same thing. But as I noticed it before, Nickel would have tried to think of putting a reverse in the other way, but they finally get it. But in that case, if they have a choice in between, they would know for sure. But as for Mephone, he was making a lot of great decisions, but sometimes it gets things in the way. Sometimes with the special guests, of course, from other episodes back then, or maybe it could be another contestant that might be on for the next adventure, for next time on. In Anime Insanity Invitational, it would be good news, but sometimes it definitely would be too hard to figure out which one it is. I mean, this would be fantastic if everybody would love to see that. So I noticed that I was pretty shocked. I was in the live stream and definitely checked it out. But as I noticed before, it turned out great, and this was excellent. While、well, the show must go on, and we can definitely keep the show rolling for a new season. So this must mean it's not that bad, actually. I know that nobody wins the contest, but let's face it, it's great decisions with the making of making my object shows and configuring that it would make sense. 
So that would be my future. And fantastic. So yeah, I guess you would definitely make a creation of your own show. What would it be? Your thoughts. Episode 17, not bad at all. Number 6. Episode 10, I am chocolate. What does that mean, I am chocolate? Does that mean sometimes that I am free? Or am I rejoined on the island? Well, it almost means the same thing. I just rejoined. Well, there is no other sense that way. The reason why they called I am chocolate is because of not only chocolates from dessert, but that means that I am rejoined in. Well, this would almost be impossible enough if one of the contestants would rejoin a game. As you may have already noticed, jumping into further on the other side of the indefinite island, they would know that they would have to compete and race and make the correct spelling of transformation. And yes, I know definitely most of the competitors of the contestants who are eliminated can compete, but I know that they definitely wanted to get into that. Sometimes each competitor can't really get into this. Goo, for example, so slow to get up there. And it's definitely Goo. And Blueberry, kind of heavy, well, it's not really the best choice for him to go for. So only Life Ring, Tea Kettle, and Cabby wanted to do on their own. So yeah, they figure, why not with the challenge? So they definitely did. And after that is over, then a rejoin turns to Cabby. After being suspended here for a couple episodes on the while back, she finally rejoins the game and earns the immunity cookie in gold. And Candle definitely illuminated and definitely handed it off. Now Cabby is gold. That's definitely what happens when you win the game. Pretty cool, huh? Well, now in that case, she finally returns to the game and definitely the elimination comes in. So, I never saw that one coming when Ying Yang was putting the chocolate syrup and put a drink of it. I wouldn't say that I was definitely Ying Yang putting the chocolate syrup or magic shell in it. But in that case, I'm Chocolate definitely knows that I'm back in the game. That's where you can also handle it for yourself if you enjoyed this episode of a rejoin. Better than the other one with the episode 15, the second rejoin of the game of Blue Buried. Not really all what everybody has to do, but that's what you always do to join back in the game. Consider yourself if you like this one too. Number 5. Episode 18. A Jury of Your Fears. Now, this is definitely going to be surprised by you. I'm definitely sending this one here to a number 5. five. Why is this? Well, it's because of what happens now. This is definitely what I've been seeing things with the exact copy from Walkie Talkie. And of course, the return of Springy from underneath the surface of the ground that was eaten up by floor. But definitely, however, on episode 17, she finally got him punched out. I just didn't really say that the floor definitely ate it up very quickly, but I said it before is that Springy, he definitely got out of here in no time. Well, that's what happens most of it before the next episode has released, and now the year is already on us. So as I mentioned it, this is like, no way. I can't believe it, that this had to be the only thing that I get to know for. When this happens to be like it's springtastic, well, this happened to be like a fury nightmare in my fuel. Well, the first attempt here for examination time happen to be like the same voice just like elimination time. But as I mentioned it before, that got pretty ugly for the start. Well, I wouldn't say that it wouldn't be funnier if this would be like already exact the same thing, but he finally found himself that he would have had the perfect way, but without losing everyone, definitely will be a bad thing for me. So I would have definitely felt like we're never going to have a prize again, we're never going to let this happen again? Or is there another way that we can have a solution? Well, I'm not really care for that one anyway. But in that mind, it happens to be like all of a sudden. Most of the time, when this exact scene happens, it's gotta be one thing. And three of them were sent up in the cage. I was pretty shocked, however. 
I would have screamed, but that didn't really care about me for everyone. So I would have just felt like I would stay silent and keep my mouth shut. That's all that happens to most of the time. But as you already noticed, this is what sometimes happens. You don't say peep, like me phone said. Peep. I said not a peep. Okay, I'll stop. Well, during this examination, something happened, and they all know they finally came in, turning off me phone, and also stopping for the contestant of the winning of the game, to win it all. As I noticed before, it had to be like one considerate to another. As you already noticed that Springy finally got out of here in no time, and definitely got trapped up by the floor. It definitely happened to be like that. And I thought they wouldn't vote for Silver Spoon. But this is not a use to it. So they already made the exact change of it. So I now know he's okay. So at that point, however, it really had to be like it was just part one, just like episode eight before part two. And then combine it up with a whole part. Well, this one turned to be a little different. Because Adam was telling everybody about this, there's going to be two finale parts of the episodes. One is episode 18, and one is episode 19. So that finally made it the announcement. So that's what happens, I have to stay back for now. So I already made a reaction with part one of the finale. So that happened to be like episode 18. That's for some reasons. And then, the next side of it is episode 19. Well, you'll see that one on the other side in just a couple of seconds, so it won't be that long, trust me. So episode 18, Jury of Your Fears, would you be scared if the machines are attacking you? You know, I would be, but I would try to fight back, so I'll see what I can do to try to stop one and to protect the other contestants, so I've got power. Oh yes, I can. Jury of Your Fears? means the nightmare comes to you. Number 4. Episode 12. Home is where the heart is. Since I was not even considering it in myself of what this is going to happen like, when Floor didn't left the island that point, he noticed that he made a talk with me phone and he would have realized he would have felt like he wouldn't be able to stay here that long. But he always, of course, likes it here. But that point is no more use. And it's, this is what happens as you're no longer welcome on this island. But this doesn't happen to be like that. Because he's the floor and he shouldn't be disappearing like that all of a sudden. When I was realizing about this from episode 18, I was really noticing it was a jar. Well, the first one happened to be like this, but that would be a bad idea. But wait, why in the world cannot be like that? I don't think nobody would ever like this before, especially when trying to stop on the floor from being hurtful or being like really bad. So I didn't really think that most of them can try to stop the attackers to go on the floor and get rid of it for good. So I'm thinking floor must be alone, so he has to get away with that. So don't try to like trap it up if you can. So I know it definitely happens to be most of the time. And this is what happens now. They're making discussions up. But there is a hot air balloon to try to escape it. But this one comes up to scare Silver Spoon. And he's on a balloon. Oh yeah, that's what happens now. He fell out. He felt okay. That's good to know. Well, there would have been a perfect way that they would have tried to take shelter immediately. But he totally forgot about that. And this is what happens. The earthquake starts to rumble. Well, because the volcano is starting to initiate, this is whatever happens. But Bo was trying to, like, not go near it. But she took a chance to try to save the day. And this is, yeah, that's a great action look in between. And good look to try to save it all. So, yes, now I know that she definitely made that creation and she wants to try to, like, help Floor out. To let him calm it down and then, yeah, there you go. That's what totally happens to be like episode 12. This one got a good kick in to the top 5, but made it into the runner-up for the top 3 right in between. So that definitely give a good successful episode right over on other episodes 
right in between of 8 and 7. Well, now, this is what happens to be in. That this is a good one. You got to give that one a credit to them. They definitely did all on their own with the hard work of its pain perception. They have done it so hard that they can definitely do this again and again. But episode 12 did seem like greater than ever. If you watch it, you can find your home and you can go where your heart is at. That's what happens. Your state, your country, your home, and also your community. That's what everybody does. They always do say, home to serve the heart. I would highly recommend it if you can watch that one over and over again. All right, let's get into the top three. Number three is episode 11, Pesty Besties. You may have come across here where I'm getting to a pet. I really have been talking it through that most of you guys have pets. Well, especially to me as Senate Beast, I have a pet named Lil Beast. Love that name. And he definitely loved it too. But here are other pets out there that definitely wanted to have fun. Just play around a little bit in between. And definitely ready for the pet battle. But one race is that they ruined their birthday. Surprise. Mifon was desperate. I was really noticing that, yeah, I'm kind of desperate too, but not really. I'm definitely thinking it's for real. As you may have already noticed it before, before the battle starts, there are some couple other bats who have gone and run away, especially to Sprinkles too, from Ying Yang. And yes, Sprinkles is definitely losing out of control, so that's definitely a disqualification. And same thing with Bose's bot of the bat, not really turning to be everybody's looking at it too. I mean, what could this possibly be? They are expecting right now saying, oh, why the bats are not coming back? Seemed like it was a little disqualification. A little bit upset to go with that. Nickel Jr. I mean, that's kind of like a great name to hear that. And definitely a fancy name in between from Floor, Paintbrush, Silver Spoon, Cabby, Balloon, and definitely you all know for. I do note that. Especially when it comes with naming one, you may know that you may have a good sound at it too. Especially to Tootsie Wootsie. May not be what you are looking for. Now, if only I had one. Well, it may be what they get, as you may have always know. After the pet battle, this one was turned to be over. Nickel had finally won the immunity. When I say about this episode, it has to be like a pet battle in the boxing ring. Not really humans who can definitely be in the boxing ring matchups. But this episode was excellent. Deserves to give it the top three between right of those other episodes that are runner-up. But hey, let me tell you this. If you have one of your pets, be always kind to each other. And I've done reactions too, so I will have that one in the link in the description. So you can watch that one again, or also in my playlist too. Yeah, it's definitely very nice to have that one. Excuse me for demented dogs, insane dog, criminal dogs. <laughs> There's every dogs out there. I mean, what could they do now? Gotta explain it for yourself. But Pesty Besties is a must-do. It's fun, though. I mean, gotta give that credit. Like a puppy bull. Now I mentioned to say is episode 11 is a real way to enjoy the pet life and beyond its point. Make it a credit one. All right, this one is going to shock you right now because number two, we have an upset. Episode 19, you can't do this forever. I was shocked because this might have been happened to be like, this would be the end of the season. But this is nowhere luck. Why is that? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this happened to be like, I thought this one is the best episode. But I was pretty concerned that it was a close call. But that one turned to be like a down giver from the last three competitors over against the uninvitational committees. There is no way that they can try to like keep it out of here with their sight. I mean, I am really, really surprised. If you watched it and you think that this is your favorite, I mean, you have to go with the exact thing. I mean, I was really stopping by a pound at this. And this is no way I was able to do this on my own to try to go for help. But now, the second attempt with the examination time comes up a lot much better than that. And walkie talkie realized want to give an apology and want to say for me phone if he can definitely come back in. 
without the retirement because, well, whatever. I mean, not even a choice. And the dreamery of Mi Phone 4S wants to be like a happy ending. I was shocked out of it too, so <laughs> you gotta help me out if you can try to stop me. Or try to go with the happy ending to finish it off. But this one happened to be a close save that he finally gave it off to Spree as he is back to normal. Well, except for Glitch. But that's what happens to take care of it as a good toy. Well, <laughs> Good thing she definitely did not even saw that one coming because right now she's already shut off and he likes it with the toy. I mean, you gotta go with the figure. For Zooey left for ya, that's what happens most. And that's what happens now. They really loved it. And if you enjoyed episode 19 of the season finale, you can watch my reaction up on the calling card on your right. But you know what's coming down now? Number one. And this is where you're going to start freaking out now. Episode 14, Spring on the Breakfast. And this is what happens now. The Jingles commercial of Springtastic. Take a listen. When you wake up in the morning feeling slow and depressed, you need a balanced breakfast cereal to bring out your best. You can step into a brand new you. Spring, 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 spring-tastic. Breakfast. I really like this one. You know why? Because of what the shocking comes in between, I really enjoyed of showing it up in between from the 90s commercial of the breakfast cereal and also, of course, the jingles. However, this turned out to be like a retro scene from between of the commercial showing it with a good effect, like it's a 90s, so I definitely learned how to do that. And with the end credits right in between. I mean, that's amazing. I was really hoping that I would be able to do that also right in between of the background and also making the movie as also. But as you may already notice, this is definitely going back in time when you notice from the 1990s. And I can expect that this will be like a great show and forever all. So Spring on the Breakfast is a perfect episode that I really enjoyed. This one is my favorite and I really get enjoyed it. And also, who loves to have a good cereal breakfast? You know, I do. I always enjoy my cereal. And a good calories definitely brings it all. But as you may already notice, this scene turned out to be a shocking surprise. Well, almost the same thing like episode 17, but this suitcase. It finally had appeared from season two. Everybody in the seats, the crowd was gasped and shocked and surprised of each competitors are coming back. I mean, from last season, I mean like, no way. That is like, unbelievable. And some of our competitors that have been eliminated was Candle and Test 2. I am really shocked and surprised that this happened. But as I can tell now, I mean, I really definitely enjoyed it. You know why? Because I really love seeing the character actors. They did the best. Rock on world. And you guys are awesome. Well, in that case, from the BFDI and in Anime Sanity, I'm hoping I should return again for our next event. But in that case, episode 14 of the in Anime Sanity Invitational Spring on the Breakfast Best Episode. This one rocks. So that is it for my top 15 of the Inanime Insanity Invitational Best Episodes that I enjoyed. Do you like it? Which one is your favorite episode from in between of 1 through 19? Let me know in the comment box here below. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you really like it, go check out into my playlist reaction video, just like on the calling card. And also, there will be tons of more videos here in between of the BFDI and an Anime Sandy experience. As I do, in between of the double header, right in between of the Anime Sandy and the BFDI along the way. 
So that will be on its way here at the end of the video, so once that's over, you can click that video. If you don't, well, you can definitely, like, choose it in between for the BFDI TPOT reaction or in my playlist section. You may never know what goes next. So at that point, a huge credit to all the contestants that have definitely done the best here at Inanime Insanity at the Immunity Island, and of course, the creators that made this part of the show. They always rock. In between of Animation Epic, and also of course with a little help of Cake Brunch, and yes, you can't forget about this, Whoop Doo. Yeah, I know that one. That turned to be like, amazing and you think. And Spartan Dash, of course. I can't miss that one out either. So these guys are the best, and I think that they enjoyed it too. I love to take their autographs, and I finally got it on paper. Yeah, this is amazing. I finally definitely have it all papered down, and this is fantastic, of getting their autographs from the creators and the actors. So that's it for now. Peace out, everybody, for a while, as the Inanime Insanity Invitational Top 15 Best Episode Dial. This is Chris from Son of Beast. You can follow me on my social media. I'm on X, Instagram, TikTok. Link into my about page. Thanks for watching. See you next time.